Lisa Nandy, who joins me in the studio for the you know for long time we've not been able to see you here so thanks very much for coming in Morning. um let's just talk a little bit about uh, Dominic Cummings today because the government would say that you know this is very much you know not important right now what is important is the vaccine rollout well of course the vaccine rollout's really important and councils and NHS workers and the armed forces are getting on with that all over the country but Dominic Cummings has already made a series of really serious allegations about the Prime Minister. He said that he repeatedly delayed lockdowns, which may have cost lives. Don't forget, we got the worst death toll in Europe. He says the Prime Minister made really offensive comments about the virus only killing over 80-year-olds, so it didn't seem to matter, about letting the bodies pile high. And why and, this matters... And we must be clear, and you'll know as well, that they have denied that that yeah, was, absolutely. The, was said. The Prime Minister has completely and utterly denied this through his official channels, and they can't both be telling the truth. So what will be important today is whether Dominic Cummings comes armed with evidence. Either the Prime Minister is lying or the Prime Minister has appointed someone to one of the most senior positions in government who himself is a liar, who made key decisions about COVID and who the Prime Minister stood by even when he broke the lockdown rules himself. Either way, this does not reflect well on the Prime Minister's judgment or his character. Um, what kind of evidence would be good enough, from your point of view at least? Well, Dominic Cummings says that he's got recordings apparently of some of these things and I think it's hard to escape the impression as with when he went to Barnard Castle on that jaunt almost exactly a year ago today that he likes the circus around this but he says that he has some evidence let's see it let's hear it and let's hear the Prime Minister's account let's have some honesty and transparency for once about why these decisions were made the government has said that they'll have an inquiry into Covid into why we've got the worst death toll in Europe and one of the worst fallouts of any any major economy but they're trying to kick it into the long grass it looks like that won't report until after the next election it's really important that we learn the lessons now the families who've lost loved ones are absolutely owed an explanation for what's happened um, and as you as you point out you know that there is there is a plan for that public inquiry is that is that the, is that would that be a better place to have it do you think where all the evidence is on show for people well, I think there's got to be a comprehensive inquiry into what went wrong. But for bereaved families who are looking for answers, and most of all looking to make sure that this never happens again, that we never make repeated mistakes like the mistakes with the borders, which have been made over and over again with local lockdowns, that we're still dealing with now, these major mistakes that the government keeps making, they want to make sure this doesn't happen to any other family who have to go through the nightmare that they've been through. And with more pandemics potentially expected, scientists are predicting predicting this won't be the last time this happens to us, surely we've got to have truth, honesty and transparency. And that's what we'd be looking for from the Prime Minister um, today. You, you, I just come, we'll come back to you in a second about what you said about so-called local lockdowns. Um, there was some confusion, wasn't there, yesterday about um, the advice, travel advice, which has now been updated this morning. And I'm just going to say very clearly, these eight areas where they have a particular problem with the Indian variant of coronavirus, um, the advice has changed from avoid travel unless essential to minimize travel is that the right advice i mean you know i think at this stage a lot of people in the affected areas have really stopped listening we woke up on monday morning to find that apparently guidance had been in force on the government's website since friday telling us not to move in and out of affected areas but nobody had bothered to tell us it was only thanks to the manchester evening news that anyone found out this was even happening. Don't forget, these are areas like Bolton, which is right next door to me in Wigan, that have been in almost continuous lockdown for over a year now. People haven't been able to hug families. You've got grandparents who haven't met grandchildren. And to treat us as an afterthought on a government website is to treat people's lives with absolute contempt. This is how you undermine public trust. And I think the government now really has to get a grip. They have to work with local leaders. They shouldn't be finding out about this through the media. They're the people responsible for public health. And they have to provide clear advice for the whole country. These local lockdowns just have right. not worked for um, us. Are you adding to confusion by calling it a local lockdown? Because the government is saying it's not a local lockdown. I think yesterday the government was calling it a not local lockdown. I haven't got the faintest idea what that means. And more importantly, nor do most people in places like Bolton, Leicester, Kirklees that found themselves subject to these restrictions. From the very beginning, it's been clear that the countries that have got a grip on this pandemic are the ones where they've been open, honest, transparent and clear with the public about what is expected of them. Um, we're talking to Grant Shapps um, at half past seven on this programme, so hopefully we'll get more information on exactly what it means. Um, just let's talk about the specific advice, which is in place now which is minimized travel 
Is that the right advice in your view? Well, I suppose it depends what it means. I mean, we, you know, I've, because Bolton is one of the areas affected and it neighbours Wigan, part of the Bolton, one of the Bolton constituencies is in the Wigan borough, so my council leader is responsible for it. I've been inundated with inquiries from people saying, does it mean I can travel? Can I go on holiday, for example? Some people have booked holidays. Yesterday, Nadeem Zahawi, the minister, came to the House of Commons and seemed to suggest that you could go on holiday, you could go to the airport, but you probably shouldn't move in and out of the area. That's very confusing. Should people be moving in and out for work? We need to get some details about what this means. People will follow the rules, can I just but they need to know what they are. Well, I mean, just, uh, just you know, from your point of view, you know, your constituents, as you say, will be travelling in and out of that area. So what is your advice? Well, I, all the way through this, I've been saying to people, look, just be as careful as possible. We need to be cautious about unlocking because this has got to be the last lockdown. So if the government is still saying that people can, can move in and out of the area, then there's no need to panic. But, you know, social distance, um, wear masks, ventilation, um, and, you know, if you can avoid social mixing to a great degree at the moment just be cautious while we're getting the vaccine rolled out because we can't afford to undermine the good work and the sacrifices that people have made already um, and how concerned are you um, by you know for your constituents given that they are so close that this could be spreading well I have, I have lots of constituents who were in Bolton over the weekend you know that a lot of my constituents because it's neighboring will be in Bolton to go to the local gym to eat out we've you know been encouraged to go back out and our pubs our restaurants our shops are desperate for the trade and so I've got lots of constituents who unwittingly were breaking the law potentially over the weekend um, I mean my advice to them has just been be careful try and be sensible let's be cautious and um, you know try and keep a distance from people People and people are trying their best, but 